things are just better when they're not made in the USA. So it is a fight you want, is it? Well, you shall have your fight, but on my terms. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 worst American remakes of foreign movies. Get us out of here. Get us out. For this list, we're taking a look at foreign films that underwent an American remix and didn't quite stand up to the original. In these cases, the charm and appeal of the original, not to mention some of the creativity, ends up being lost in translation. I would rather you be a man who did exactly as he pleased. Number 10, Bangkok Dangerous. Whatever happens in Bangkok stays in Bangkok. Based on a 1999 Thai movie of the same name, This American installment may have had the same directors as the original in the Pang Brothers, but that's where the similarities end. Do the police know who you are? No one knows who I am. No one knows where I am. I know. Starring Nicolas Cage as a hard-worn assassin named Joe, this retread strips its protagonist of the deafness and muteness that originally made the character so unique and informed his motivations. What, what is your work? Oh, uh, uh, banking. Ba banker. Ban banker. Banker, yes. Banker. Instead, we're treated to Nick Cage running around Bangkok brooding and shooting everyone. This film was not considered a success. Goodbye. <laughs> Number nine, Taxi. Go. Do what? You still owe me five bucks, man. Maybe I didn't make myself clear, right? I'm coming to your vehicle. Follow that car. Don't worry about speed limits, street lights, nothing. Do with me. Queen Latifah as a taxi driver? Sure. Jimmy Fallon as an undercover cop? All right. Giselle Bunchen as a sexy bank robber? Um, okay. But even if we yield all those points, this remake of the massively successful French franchise is still problematic. <laughs> That's funny. Paralleling Luc Besson's 1998 version. Dites-moi, elle fait plutôt un joli bruit pour un taxi. Amateur. Latifa's a newly minted cabbie with professional racing aspirations. Fallon's a bumbling detective, but that's where the fun ends. He got a gun and he's going to use it. He crazy. Who said he want? Mine. Through an American filter, Taxi's a mess with impossible stunts, cliché jokes, and the obligatory laughing gas scene. However, it did succeed at the box office. What part of Atlanta? Yeah. You know, on the, uh, I live over on the corner of uh, uh, Castro Street. Did you know? Number eight, City of Angels. She said, what good would wings be if you couldn't feel the wind on your face? On its own, City of Angels is not terrible. But as a loosely reworked version of Vim Vender's 1987 masterpiece, Wings of Desire, it's a betrayal. Both follow angels who observe humans and end up falling for one. However, from there, the U.S. retread diverts into a soppy romance between Nick Cage and Meg Ryan. I feel you. Whereas the Franco-German original teams with interesting side stories and supporting characters, and allows viewers to discover the film's sentiment for themselves, City of Angels basically bangs the audience over the head with emotion. What do you do? Read. No, I mean you <laughs> work. Oh, well, I'm a messenger. Oh. Well, what kind of messenger? Like a bike messenger? No, I'm a messenger of God. Number seven, The Tourist. It all started when I met a woman on the train from Paris. This is already good. No, no. The takeaway from this remake and the 2005 original is that good plastic surgery saves lives and rekindles romances. They think of everything, don't they? Starring A-list actors Angelina Jolie and Johnny Depp, this remake of a French thriller should have been a box office smash. I'm sorry. What for? 
Instead, it was a confusing mashup with no clear plot. Unlike the original, the film lacks the charm and chemistry of its leading characters and takes itself too seriously. However, despite derision from critics and audiences, the film was nominated for three Golden Globes. However, they were in the comedy category. I'm Elise. I'm Frank. That's a terrible name. <laughs> it's the only one I've got. Maybe we can find you another. Okay. Number six, one missed call. Any dead people call? We're not home. A handful of Japanese horror movies have survived American remakes and flourished. This is not one of them. But I heard them, okay? Leanne got a phone call, and so did Brian right before they died. Hailed as the worst reviewed film of 2008, One Missed Call was cited for its vanilla performances, cliched scares, and for ripping off horror classics like Scream, The Ring, and The Grudge. Monday, June 12, 10, 17 p.m. I don't know, it's, it's the weirdest, weirdest thing. It's like every time I turn around, there's... While 2003's original Japanese version was also criticized for similarities to those films, the American remake takes it to the next level. This redo is like a slap in the face to the entire J-horror genre. Okay, we don't want to use this phone at all. Mm -hmm. Well, the phone is yours, so you can do whatever you want with it. Number five, dinner for schmucks. What are you doing? I'm applying heat. Barry, please stop doing that. With both Paul Rudd and Steve Carell headlining, we thought this would be a ridiculous funny remake of the original French comedy. Allez-y. Allez-y, mon vieux. Allez, l'OM, allez, l'OM, allez. Allez, l'OM, allez, l'OM, allez. What we got instead was a clunky film that was overwhelmingly just meh. Oh, okay, Tim. The charm and wit, and most importantly, the likability of the main characters didn't translate to the American incarnation. I lost her clitoris. With cheap slapstick, lots of awkwardness, and only a few funny moments sprinkled throughout, it's a slice of soggy white bread when audiences were expecting a nice crusty baguette. I have laid eggs inside of your brain. Get them out of my head. You are no longer in control of me. I control you, and you are under my power. I know everything, Thurman. Number four, get Carter. Can I help you with something? I'm Jack Carter, Richie's brother. Fans were excited to see Sylvester Stallone reemerge from near obscurity to star in this remake of the 1971 British classic about a mob enforcer who's investigating his brother's death. I think he was taken out. Taken out? But their excitement probably stopped there. The original version, starring Michael Caine, was decidedly gritty and dark. You bloody whore. Frank was too careful to die like that. Now who killed him? And sure, the 2000 US remake did attempt to touch on the seediness and violence of the original, but it got lost in its attempt to be cool, which just ended up looking corny. You know, Mr. Carter, I really don't have to answer your questions. Sure you do, Jeremy. Number three, death at a funeral. Hola. Do you always open the door half naked? It was cool that Peter Dinklage reprised the role he played in the 2000 British original. <laughs> but other than that, there doesn't seem to be any compelling reason for this film to have been remade. Yikes. Death at a Funeral follows a family as they navigate a catastrophic memorial service full of farce and family secrets, slapstick and shenanigans. And as you can imagine, both are in supremely poor taste. My father's dead. Back right. While neither film was necessarily Oscar worthy, the remake's clumsy writing and lackluster acting ensure it falls short of its source material. There's nothing to discuss. <laughs> no, no. Oh, I said back off, buddy! Oh, you gonna bring a gat to a funeral? Nah, no, nobody got to get calf. Nobody. <laughs> Number two, 
the Wicker Man. Sorry, I'm Edward Malis from California. I'm a policeman. See my badge? Audiences were probably too shocked by the utter preposterousness of the Nicolas Cage version of this film to realize it was a remake of a 1973 British classic starring Christopher Lee. You suspect uh, foul play? I suspect murder and conspiracy to murder. While the original was well received, the remake of this story about a mysterious group of pagans was a dumpster fire of ridiculous. Now why in the hell would you let them do a sick thing like that? Aside from Cage's frantic and awkward performance, there's not much to recommend in the remake. God damn it! Other than that part where he punches a lady in a bear suit and the bees. The many, many bees. Oh, no, not the bees! Not the bees! Ah! I love my eyes! My eyes! Ah! Before we rip on our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Where do you think you are? Where do you think you are right now? At home? The woman who was murdered in that house three years ago knew this man. He committed suicide the morning after she died. I see. What, dead people? <laughs> Rooms that change, phantom escorts, whatever it is that you believe you're seeing, it's not real! I'm leaving now, with or without you. Number one, Godzilla. You know that bad feeling I get when something really bad is gonna happen? Yeah. I'm getting that feeling right now, man. The 1954 Japanese original spawned an international phenomenon, a slew of entertaining sequels, and practically an entire genre. So it makes sense that almost 50 years later, Hollywood would decide to barf on that legacy with a really poor remake of the iconic film. What could have been an opportunity to showcase new advances in special effects just wound up being an excuse to watch Matthew Broderick wear a beret for over two hours. Those were footprints, right? Yes, they were. Anybody see what made him? With a drastic redesign of the titular monster, next to no plot and iffy acting, Godzilla gives all remakes a bad name. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, this is not good. This is not good. Do you agree with our list? I don't like it. What do you think is the worst American movie remake? For more entertaining top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. <laughs> Whatever they're paying you, it ain't gonna be enough.